Hey there, fellow knowledge seekers. Today we're diving into the dark and deadly world of pandemics, the plague of Athens. Picture this, the Peloponnesian War is raging and suddenly a mysterious plague strikes the city. This was no ordinary plague. It wiped out a quarter of Athens's population. What did the Athenians do to combat this terrifying epidemic? Well, they turned to their favorite pastime, drinking wine. But not just any wine, they mixed it with a variety of herbs, believing this potent concoction would purify their bodies and fend off the disease. Talk about a happy hour gone wrong. Now, before you think the Athenians were just looking for an excuse to party, remember that their medical knowledge was pretty limited. They had no idea what caused the plague, so they figured, why not try some herbal wine? Unfortunately, this remedy was about as effective as using a sieve to carry water. The plague continued to ravage the city, and the wine likely just made everyone more relaxed, if not a little tipsy. But hey, at least they tried, right? It's a testament to the human spirit. In the face of a deadly disease, we look for solutions, no matter how unconventional. And let's be honest, a little wine probably made the chaos a bit more bearable. The Antonine Plague. This devastating epidemic, believed to be smallpox, wreaked havoc from 165 to 180 CE, claiming the lives of millions. So, how did the mighty Romans battle this invisible enemy? With magical amulets and charms, of course. Imagine this. Romans of all social classes, from senators to soldiers, walking around adorned with fancy necklaces, inscribed with spells and incantations. They believed these amulets had the power to protect them from the plague. Picture it like a fashion craze, but with a life-saving twist, or so they hoped. It was the ancient equivalent of wearing your lucky socks to a big game, except, you know, life and death were on the line. But wait, there's more! Some Romans also turned to sacrificing animals and even humans in desperate attempts to appease the gods and stave off the plague. Talk about taking drastic measures! It's a reminder that in times of crisis, people can go to great lengths to find comfort and safety, even if it means believing in a bit of magic. Let's not forget the good old Roman baths. They thought bathing in certain waters could cleanse them of the disease. Unfortunately, communal baths during a pandemic are about as helpful as sharing a toothbrush. Still, you have to admire their dedication to hygiene, even if it was misguided. The Antonine Plague also had a significant impact on the Roman army, weakening its power and contributing to the decline of the Roman Empire. So not only were these magical amulets a bust, but the plague itself changed the course of history. Sometimes the cure is not just ineffective, it's downright disastrous. The Black Death. Desperation led to some of the most bizarre and gruesome cures in history. First up, we have the infamous Sewer Cure. Yes, you heard that right. Some people believed that sitting in sewers would somehow drive the plague away. The logic was that the foul stench would overpower the disease, like some kind of medieval Febreze. Of course, sitting among filth and rats probably did more harm than good. But hey, desperate times call for desperate measures, right? Then there were the flagellants, a group of people who believed the plague was divine punishment for their sins. Their solution? Whip themselves in public displays of penance, hoping to appease an angry god. Picture it. Crowds of people, bloodied and bruised, marching through towns, lashing themselves with whips. It was like a traveling horror show, minus the popcorn. But wait, it gets even weirder. Some believed in the power of sound to ward off the plague. Enter the medieval marching bands with people banging pots and pans, blowing trumpets, and creating a cacophony of noise to scare away the disease. It's like your neighbor's garage band, but with higher stakes. Spoiler alert. The plague wasn't scared off by loud noises, but at least the villages had some entertainment. And let's not forget the strange concoctions people drank. Some thought that drinking potions made from crushed emeralds would protect them. Others recommended a mixture of ground-up unicorn horn, yes, unicorn, and molasses. It's like a medieval smoothie, but with a hefty price tag and no actual unicorns involved. The Black Death left a lasting mark on history, changing the course of Europe forever. It also gave us a glimpse into the lengths to which humans will go in the face of unimaginable fear. The creativity and desperation behind these cures are a testament to the human spirit, and sometimes our incredible capacity for bizarre ideas. The Dancing Plague. Imagine this. People suddenly start dancing uncontrollably in the streets and they just can't stop. Day and night, they're dancing until they collapse from exhaustion or worse. It sounds like the plot of a bizarre musical, but it actually happened. So what did the townspeople think was the cure for this mysterious affliction? More dancing! The local authorities believed that the dancers were under a spell or possessed by a spirit. Their solution? Build a stage, 
hire musicians, and encourage even more dancing to expel the evil from their bodies. It's like solving a chocolate addiction by opening a candy shop. You can picture it now, a medieval flash mob, but without the rehearsed choreography and happy faces. These folks were dancing out of sheer compulsion. The heat, the sweat, the blisters, it must have been a sight to behold. It's safe to say that dance fever took on a whole new meaning. The townsfolk also tried other methods. Physicians at the time suggested that hot blood caused the dancing mania, so they advised bloodletting. Yes, let's add some leeches into the mix, because what's a little blood loss when you're already dancing yourself to death? In the end, the dancing plague eventually fizzled out as mysteriously as it began. Was it mass hysteria? Ergot poisoning from moldy bread? We may never know for sure. What we do know is that this bizarre episode serves as a reminder of the strange ways the human mind and body can react to stress and fear. The Great Plague of London. The city was gripped by fear as the bubonic plague spread like wildfire, killing over 100,000 people. Desperate times called for desperate measures, and Londoners certainly got creative with their cures. One of the most bizarre remedies involved strapping live chickens to the swollen buboes caused by the plague. Yes, you heard that right. The idea was that the chicken would draw out the disease. Imagine running out of your house, not to escape the plague, but to find a suitable chicken to strap to your body. It's poultry in motion. But the madness didn't stop there. To purify the air, Londoners lit huge bonfires in the streets, believing that the smoke would cleanse the atmosphere of the plague. The city must have looked like it was hosting the world's largest barbecue, minus the fun. People walked around in thick smoke, hoping it would save them from the dreaded disease. If nothing else, the bonfires made for a good excuse to avoid talking to your neighbors. And let's not forget the classic plague doctor outfit. Long coats, gloves, and that iconic beaked mask filled with aromatic herbs. These doctors looked more like birdmen from a medieval sci-fi than medical professionals. The herbs in the beak were meant to protect them from the miasma, or bad air, believed to carry the disease. It's like fighting a pandemic with aromatherapy, stylish but not particularly effective. Despite these quirky and often ineffective cures, the Great Plague of London eventually subsided. It taught us a lot about disease transmission and the importance of sanitation. And of course, it gave us a treasure trove of historical oddities to chuckle at. The cholera pandemics? Cholera, a deadly waterborne disease, spread rapidly through contaminated water supplies, causing severe dehydration and death. As always, humanity's response was a mix of ingenuity and sheer desperation. Let's start with the cure that probably made you smell before you felt better, camphorated brandy. People believed that drinking brandy infused with camphor would fend off cholera. Imagine your local pub reeking of camphor with patrons guzzling this dubious concoction. If nothing else, it probably made their breath minty fresh, or at least strongly medicinal. Next on the list is tar water. Yes, that's right, water infused with tar. People were advised to drink this foul mixture, believing it would purify their insides. It's like deciding that the best way to clean a dirty kitchen is to drink the cleaning fluid. Not the brightest idea, but hey, they were desperate. But the piece de resistance of cholera cures has to be the live frog method. Some believe that swallowing a live frog would cure them of cholera. It sounds like a fairy tale gone wrong. Forget kissing a frog to find a prince. They were gulping them down to beat a deadly disease. Ribbit indeed. Amidst these strange cures, there were some advances in understanding the disease. Thanks to pioneers like Dr. John Snow, who mapped cholera outbreaks and identified contaminated water sources as the culprit, we eventually learned the importance of clean water and sanitation. Dr. Snow didn't just give us a better understanding of cholera, he's also considered one of the fathers of modern epidemiology. While many of the 19th century cures were questionable at best, they highlight the human spirit's relentless drive to find solutions, no matter how bizarre. It's a testament to our creativity and resilience in the face of deadly pandemics. The Spanish flu. This deadly influenza virus infected one-third of the world's population and killed millions. And as always, people came up with some pretty inventive ways to try and protect themselves. First up, let's talk onions. Yes, onions. People believed that placing sliced onions around their homes would absorb the flu virus. Kitchens everywhere were filled with the pungent smell of onions, as families hoped these humble vegetables would do the trick. Imagine waking up to a house reeking of onions. If the flu didn't get you, the smell might. Next, we have the Vicks Vaporub craze. This mentholated ointment was smeared generously on every part of the body, chest, back, neck, and even inside the nostrils. People believed the soothing vapors would keep the flu at bay. 
It's like turning yourself into a human menthol lozenge. While it didn't cure the flu, it did clear up sinuses quite effectively. And then there were the masks. Today, masks are a common sight, but back in 1918, they were a novel concept. People made masks out of gauze and other materials, but they often wore them incorrectly or reused them without cleaning. Some even attached bits of garlic or camphor to their masks for added protection. Talk about a smelly situation. Let's not forget about the flu vaccines of the time. With no understanding of the actual virus, some doctors concocted dubious vaccines made from various bacteria. People lined up, hopeful for a miracle cure, only to find out later that these vaccines were ineffective. It was a classic case of hope over science. Despite these odd remedies, the Spanish flu eventually subsided, partly due to the natural progression of the virus and the development of better hygiene practices. This pandemic taught us valuable lessons about public health and the importance of scientific research. The Asian flu. This H2N2 influenza virus originated in East Asia and quickly spread worldwide, causing significant mortality and societal disruption. Naturally, this era also had its fair share of unconventional cures and preventative measures. One of the most prominent folk remedies involved garlic. People believed that consuming copious amounts of raw garlic would bolster their immune systems and ward off the flu. Households everywhere reeked of garlic and garlic breath became the new normal. While garlic does have some antimicrobial properties, it was hardly a match for a viral pandemic. But hey, it kept the vampires away. Another curious remedy was the use of mustard plasters. This involved spreading a paste made of mustard seeds, flour, and water onto a cloth, which was then applied to the chest or back. The idea was that the heat generated by the mustard would stimulate circulation and aid in recovery. While mustard plasters did provide a warm sensation, they were more likely to leave you with irritated skin than to cure the flu. In addition to these home remedies, there were also some bizarre public health measures. For example, in some places it was suggested that wearing red clothing would protect you from the virus. The color red was thought to have protective properties against illness. It's like a fashion statement meets a health intervention. But unfortunately, red clothes offered no real protection against the flu. The scientific community was also hard at work during this time. In a significant advancement, a vaccine was developed and distributed relatively quickly, which helped mitigate the impact of the pandemic. This was a critical milestone in influenza research and demonstrated the importance of swift scientific response to emerging infectious diseases. The Asian flu pandemic highlighted the ongoing evolution of our understanding of infectious diseases and the importance of evidence-based medicine. While garlic and mustard plasters might not have been effective, the rapid development and deployment of a vaccine marked a turning point in global health efforts. The HIV AIDS pandemic. This virus emerged and spread rapidly, leading to a global health crisis. The lack of knowledge and rampant fear led to some pretty wild and often dangerous cures. One of the earliest and most bizarre remedies was the idea that drinking one's own urine could cure HIV AIDS. Yes, you heard that right. Some people genuinely believed that their bodily waste held the secret to fighting the virus. While this might have made for a quirky survivalist trick, it was, unsurprisingly, ineffective. Then there were those who turned to high doses of vitamins. Vitamin C, in particular, was touted as a miracle cure by some fringe health enthusiasts. People were popping vitamin C tablets like candy, hoping it would boost their immune systems to superhero levels. Unfortunately, while vitamin C is great for overall health, it's no match for a virus as complex as HIV. But the strange cures didn't stop there. Some believed that bee stings could cure HIV AIDS. The idea was that the venom in bee stings had medicinal properties that could somehow combat the virus. So, you had folks willingly getting stung by bees, a painful and completely ineffective treatment. Ouch! As misinformation spread, so did the stigma and discrimination against those living with HIV AIDS. It was a time of great fear and misunderstanding, which only fueled the search for any remedy, no matter how bizarre. However, amidst all the quackery, the scientific community was making real strides. By the mid-1990s, antiretroviral therapy, ART, became available, revolutionizing the treatment of HIV AIDS. These medications didn't cure the virus, but they allowed people to live longer, healthier lives. It was a testament to the power of science and the importance of research and development. The HIV AIDS pandemic taught us crucial lessons about the importance of education, empathy, and evidence-based medicine. It's a sobering reminder of how fear and misinformation can lead to desperate measures. COVID-19. Here we are, folks, at our final stop, the COVID-19 pandemic. 
This recent global crisis has shown us the best and worst of humanity, from remarkable scientific achievements to some truly bizarre and dangerous cures. First up, let's talk about the infamous bleach cure. Early in the pandemic, misinformation spread like wildfire, and some people actually believed that drinking or injecting bleach could kill the virus. Spoiler alert, bleach is for cleaning surfaces, not for human consumption. The results were predictably disastrous, with poison control centers overwhelmed by calls. Remember, folks, the only thing bleach should disinfect is your countertops. Another curious remedy involved UV light. Some individuals thought that shining UV light inside the body could kill the virus. While UV light is effective at disinfecting surfaces, it's not meant for internal use. Trying this at home is like using a sunbed to cure a headache, painful and utterly ineffective. And then there were the herbal concoctions. From drinking garlic tea to consuming excessive amounts of ginger and lemon, people around the world turn to their kitchens for answers. While these ingredients might boost your immune system or soothe a sore throat, they certainly can't cure COVID-19. But hey, at least your tea time got a bit spicier. The pandemic also brought back some ancient practices, like cupping therapy. Proponents claim that placing heated cups on the skin would draw out the virus. It's an old method with roots in traditional medicine, but unfortunately, it's not effective against a modern viral infection. You might end up with circular bruises, but no closer to a cure. Amidst these wild and wacky cures, science once again stepped up. The rapid development and deployment of COVID-19 vaccines have been a testament to human ingenuity and collaboration. Vaccines have proven to be the most effective tool in combating the virus, helping to reduce severe illness and save countless lives. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the importance of relying on evidence-based medicine and the dangers of misinformation. It's a reminder that while our creativity in finding cures is boundless, science and common sense should always prevail. And that wraps up our journey through history's deadliest pandemics and the crazy cures they inspired. Bye-bye.